All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. We're the Millennials. I'm Pat. I'm Ruby. And we are joined here today by Manny Morales. Thank you for joining Woo! us today. Thanks Manny, for me. he is a uh, government contractor and a photographer and uh, all around globetrotting badass. Yeah. So uh, thanks again for making time to uh, join us today and yeah, talk about what you me. do. So, so what's up? Uh, what, um, where are you from? I'm from Missouri. I'm from uh, like past independence. Okay. Slash in independence because both of my parents lived in both places. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't know you were like local, like that you were yeah, from yeah, here, yeah, that yeah. you grew up here. Yep, yep. Um, I never really knew much about the city growing up because mm. we never came this way. This is where like, you know, like all the big stuff was. Huh? Yeah. But, uh, so I never lived here as an adult until like recently when I when I came back here. So uh, yeah, I'm kind of like discovering everything for the first time. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's interesting that you can have that experience with that proximity because yeah. we, we, we feel the yeah. same way. Like we grew up, but like super far away in yeah, a smaller small town. town. <clears throat> and, but like there, I, I know people that grew up near here, like you, mm. that like never came to the city and like are learning about it too as an adult. Yeah, and it's just yeah, like yeah. such an interesting concept. Yeah, for us, we were just waiting to get to a city, like a bigger mm. city. Yeah, like we grew up our. We grew up in Southwest Kansas, so it's oh, okay. small. Southwest. Southwest mm. Kansas, Ooh. Garden City, Kansas. That's Dang. where we're from. Yeah. So, you know, there's not much going on out there. So, we yeah. were, we, I was always like, okay, let's go to, like, Wichita was a big city for me. Like, when I went to mm -hmm. Topeka, I took pictures of the downtown. <laughs> like, yeah. I was so embarrassed of saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so big. Oh. But, like, now it's, like, Topeka is See, not cool. See, but, like, I was a little bit closer, too, so it's kind of weird because I left, I left, uh, Missouri when I was like 18, I think. Yeah. So, but I went like 18 years without, I mean, I'd come here before, but like the plaza was like the end all be all. Like, yeah. it was like, oh. like just, uh, we basically in Hollywood, right? Yeah. Now, right? <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing, well, so. Deo Drive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We over here, Emmanuel Cleaver. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I'd been there a few times, but it wasn't like, I mean, it was like, I couldn't afford to be going down there all the time. And then like coming back as an adult, I'm just like, oh. Like, it's just yeah. like basic, yeah, right? Yeah, I was like, like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, oh, Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, we have Starbucks over there on the dark side. Yeah. 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 Um, so we met you not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, we were out uh, was, on a first yeah, Friday. Super so cool and random. Super <laughs> random yeah. That was such a random was a night. night. Yeah, yeah, that was, was really fun. Night. We were just hanging out uh, on, a on a first Friday. Friday. Yep. We were up at the Wolpsbestiel. Wolps. I don't know if that's how you say that, but uh, uh, visiting Mark Allen, a friend of ours, who's an artist, who's been a guest on the podcast. Check out that episode. Check out that episode. Um, <laughs> and we ran into you and we just got to talking and you're like, yeah, I just got back in town. He was shooting with the Sony actually, uh, yeah. Sam, which is why I was like, started talking to him. I was like, what do you got there? <clears throat> and uh, come to find out you're like this globe trotting guy that's just like, had just come back into town. He's like, yeah, I'm in town for a few weeks and I'm leaving again. And I was like, okay, come please be on yeah. the podcast. <laughs> While <laughs> you're here, let's get um, you on. So like what uh what does it mean to be a government contractor in your role? I mean, I guess there's different roles and capacities. <clears throat> yeah. Um well for starters, that night was fun, by the way. Yeah, yeah that yeah, night yeah, was yeah. a lot it was of fun. so random because I like I was telling you before, like we started was uh we just like we were at parlor for a long time. Yeah. Shout out parlor. Shout but, out parlor. Uh, um, right. Yeah, we're walking down the street and like like Jay, for example, like our mutual friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jay Austin like, I, also been on the yeah, podcast. Check out, out that episode. Yeah. Yeah. Check um, out that episode too. Um, <laughs> So I'd never heard anybody call him by his first. I don't think I knew his real name was John. It was just it was just Jay. I'd always known him as Jay. And so uh -huh. we're like walking down the street, and all of a sudden we just hear John, John Austin. What yeah. The fuck? And I was like, who's who's John Austin? And then Jay's like, what's up? And then we all just kind of like, we're just kind of messing around for a while. And then we well, all just we had just studio. met that guy that oh, called really? yeah, Jay yeah. John, and we were like, how does this guy know? We know Jay, but how yeah. does he know Jay? And then it turns out they went to like grade school together yeah, or yeah, something yeah. Yeah. so they hadn't seen each other in a while and then then we're like oh he's talking about jay we know jay and then that's how we met you it yeah. was really random yeah, but it cool. was really random and that was a blast hanging out yeah. yeah at the studio and yeah. meeting everybody and the guys I, I knew the guys that the other dude was with but i had never known him mm -hmm. and like i think my friend had world. barely met him too and i was like what jay he's like He's not Jay, like he's John, and like all this. I was like, okay, man, like I don't know him like that. I guess. <laughs> you had me like question my whole reality. I was like, yeah. dang, like I don't do what do it I know? Like what is real? That Jay knows everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Jay yeah. knows everybody. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the the contractor thing. So I just got out of the military in um, in October, and then 
<clears throat> so basically the job I was doing in the military before I got out, I'm going to be doing the same thing, but as on the civilian side, mm, which okay. pays okay. a lot better yeah. than, okay. <laughs> than yeah. the military. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll be going to... Well, like, can you take us to, like, did you always know you wanted to go to the military when you were in high school? Was that, like, the plan from day one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, if you, like, would ask my mom, she would say that she knew I was going to do it since I was, like, less than eight years old, probably. Really? Yeah. She was like, I was just the kid who... Uh, Always had my like, little army men and little tanks and yeah. little plastic guns and stuff. And I was like, <clears throat> there was like two costumes I was as a kid for Halloween. It was either Zorro or it was like <laughs> just a, like a dude in camouflage. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. And um, <clears throat> the really thing that got me Cute was when pictures. I was. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Um, the thing that got me was I remember <clears throat> I was in um, fourth grade and that's when 9 11 happened. Yeah. Mm. And I remember I was one of like, like we had a class at 20 i think i was one of like six or seven kids that actually went to school because i don't know for some reason parents were like yo we can't send our kids to school i was like this is in new york you yeah know? Right. and as an adult i'm just kind of like that doesn't make any sense but i remember they had it like everybody just like watching it on the tv mm -hmm. uh and like i remember that as a kid and i remember like that's kind of what fueled the fire a little bit more oh wow. yeah <clears throat> and then i had um i think i was like so we had this i went to school you know where buckner's at tiny ass little town no, mm -mm -mm. Buckner, so that's Missouri? where my, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where my mom Sounds lived, and then my dad lived towards the city, and um, so we had this principal of this of our elementary school, and he was like the hometown hero, like everybody knew him, nicest guy ever, did everything for the kids, like super, very like a very passionate educator, and um, I remember when I was like in fifth grade, I already left elementary school or like sixth grade, <coughs> he his son got killed in, Af in Iraq. Oh, wow. And uh, like the whole town knew, like everybody knew, cause um, like he was a big deal, you know. Yeah. So that that was another kind of driving factor. And then, um, yeah. So that's that's when that's basically it. So before I was, when I was really little from a young age, I just kind of knew. And my mom was like, "Yeah, like it's gonna happen." So did you turn eighteen and you were like, "Enlist <clears throat> or I'm, like go go do this now?" So yeah, kind of. So. Uh, I, I think I signed the papers when I was 17, so my mom went in there and signed for me, because mm -hmm. whenever you're under 18, you have to have another parent do it. And um, I did it, but then <laughs> I graduated high school, and I was having a lot of fun. You know, like, that summer I was a lifeguard. <clears throat> do you guys ever go to Independence? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, so there's this water park called Adventure Oasis. Oh, Shout I've seen it. Oasis. I've seen it. <laughs> it uh, that summer we worked there and it was like i still to this day say it was like the best summer of my life it was crazy it was so much fun that's awesome and then i kind of lost track there for a second i was having too much fun yeah just you know just goofing off not doing anything and then one day my parents were like yo you are you are you do this or not and i was like the light came on again i was like, oh yeah, yeah yeah so then um <clears throat> i wanted specifically to be infantry in the marines so um that was a really hard job to get at the time because that's the the one that everybody wanted because that's like um we had the saying in the infantry like everybody all other marines are like um marines by title but infantrymen are marines by definition because uh, they're the ones that actually go fight you yeah know? like mm. so they told me i had to wait a year so it was probably like summertime and then i got lucky and a dude wasn't able to go to boot camp around like nine months or eight months and so i went in april 2012 and um yeah then i spent six and a half years as a Marine. Wow. Uh, what are, what were some tough, uh, experiences or, uh, going through that process? I mean, I'm sure like having gone overseas and stuff, there's stuff experiences, but like <clears throat> just becoming a Marine, like what was tough about that? Like what was some of the experiences that you remember? Um, a lot of, uh, it, it's like any job, you know, experiences vary depending on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. right? So, um, when you first go through, like everybody's like, oh, Marine boot camp's like super hard. And at that moment, it feels hard. And then I always tell people, <clears throat> especially people who are like thinking about going in the Marines or like the infantry specifically, I tell them like, <clears throat> it's only gonna get harder. So Ooh. boot camp might seem like the hardest thing till then, then you go to infantry school. And then that one for me was pretty hard. Our it was because the instructors we had, they were pretty, uh, what's the word? Uh, they're very interesting people, and they were very, <laughs> very, very hard on us, and <clears throat> which at the time felt like wrong of them, but like in retrospect, it's like it it kind of calluses you and toughens you up a little bit mm -hmm. more than you should be. Um, 
and that was good. So I was, and then it gets harder. Then you go actually to the fleet, which is what we call like going to like an actual unit after yeah. school. <clears throat> and then it gets harder. Like the training never stops. So like once you start from the bottom, you start training, you complete like the follow on school. Then you just, it never stops. You're always learning something. There, uh, every single day you're just drilling, drilling new things. Like you have to be experts in what you have to, in your job, you know? And that also depends on the leadership you have. Mm -hmm. So like the people who are molding you, some people I'd heard, they'd be like, oh yeah, like we uh, <coughs> cleaned our weapons today and then we just went our rooms and played video games. But like mm -hmm. our, my s seniors and like all the people around me that were above me did not let us out of their sight. They were like, always wow. had us doing something. Um, which paid off because I mean we were I think we were good at what we did like yeah we that, that was gonna be my next question is like how did that impact <coughs> you in your career like once you were fully trained and like ready to go I mean I'm sure you appreciated that when yeah. you were like out there yeah yeah so um, I think <coughs> like anything in life um, we would like the easy route but like um, going through hardship really actually is what kind of tests you and molds you as yeah. a human being Mm -hmm. So, like, the um, the hard things that we were put through and, like, the very strict or, like, uh, in the discipline and, like, the how hard they were on us. Yeah. Like, our, our leaders, like, our corporals and our sergeants and everybody all know, they were, they were really hard on us. And uh, especially in this day and age, too, um, it's a little harder for Marines to kind of be how they need to be because of, like, hazing and, oh, I see. you know, like, people people who aren't in it kind of stick their hands in the cookie mm. jar and, and kind of try to dictate things. But um, I was pretty fortunate that they they basically had, like, <coughs> free reign to do what they wanted at the time. It didn't feel great, but, like, I mean, in retrospect, it, it definitely, like, I guess toughened us up. Yeah. So, yeah. The and structure then, helped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, the molding, you know, like, <coughs> it starts from the bottom, just like anything. So, like, you get molded from day one, and then in the future, if you have a strong foundation, you're going to be, like, a, I guess, stronger person, per se. So who would you recommend, because, you know, since you were young, you were, mm -hmm. like, probably going to be doing this, but who would you recommend um, go into, like, taking the same path as you? Like, if they're in <coughs> high school or, or if they're interested in just, like, what in general would or you? Or would you? Yeah, or would you? <laughs> think about it. Or who would, who <laughs> shouldn't go, maybe, is a better I, question. Uh, I, that's kind of a weird one. It gets into, like, a touchy kind of touchy things nowadays, but um, I'm a strong believer in um, a lot of, like these days there's a lot of things where they want the military to conform. Yeah. You know, um, like two big ones that happened when I was in was uh, like openly gays in the military mm -hmm. and um, women in the infantry and like combat arms and MOSs. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge thing, which I mean for us, like the, um, the like homosexuals in the actively like before it's don't ask don't tell so yeah. if you were you just didn't say anything nobody asked right mm -hmm. and then now you could be open about it which didn't affect us at all i mean it was more like um that's that's one thing i missed too is that we didn't care like there was like nobody cared what race you were what religion what what um sexual orientation whatever as long as you could do your job and mm -hmm. i knew that when my back was turned i'd have it covered yeah as long as like you could take care of the person left and your right and you're good at your job like nobody nobody cared like it was that's that's one thing and then another big one was the the women in combat arms mos's and that mm -hmm. one was a big like social issue and so now like i tell people so the military's changing and what I was getting at was you're, you conform to the military. The military doesn't conform mm -hmm. to you, um, especially the Marine Corps, because we're like the few and the proud, the best yeah. of the best, all that, all that stuff. <laughs> I don't get into that with people. But uh, <coughs> it's, uh, it's meant to be like that for a reason, I think. Um, the reason like the Marines have such like, a rich history um, and they're so proud and all this is because the culture that you're in <laughs> and you, sh in my opinion, in a lot of Marines' opinion, you need to conform to that. You, it doesn't conform to you. Yeah. Because right. the, the machine runs the way it does because um, of, like, the past experiences and the culture that you're in all the time. So I always tell people, like, if you're going to go to the Marine Corps, just know that you're going to be the one changing. You're not going to go in there and change anything. Ooh, yeah. And you'll, you'll probably leave a better, a better person, and you'll leave with some experiences. 
That makes sense. And I, and I, uh, I think the general media, being that it's like pretty liberal, doesn't do a good job of mm-hmm. explaining that Mm-mm. part of it. Yeah. Like it is very important to to be able to perform in that capacity. Mm-hmm. And they've been doing that for a very long time and know what it takes to build people yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I definitely understand what you're saying there. And like, I didn't fully understand the concept of it until you're just explaining <coughs> it right now, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and then uh, I was told people that in retrospect, I should have joined the Air Force. I've never met someone who was not happy to be in the <laughs> Air Force. Force really? I heard that, yeah, yeah, I heard yeah, the Air yeah, Force yeah. has yeah. the best food. I don't know if that's true anymore. Oh, Maybe yeah, that's it's probably, outdated it's probably information. true. But <laughs> All right, uh, we're still here with Manny. Uh, you're tuned into the Millennials, and we'll be right back after the break. All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, you're here with the Millennials. I'm Ruby. I'm Pat. And we're still joined by Manny. And we were just talking to him about um, his kind of his background. And now, so what are you doing? When we met you, <coughs> you had a camera. So now yeah, you're now yeah. you're. Have you always been into photography? <coughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, so when I first went in the military, uh. It's kind of shunned upon to be like the dude who's like super excited to be there. Like yeah. everybody likes mm. to be miserable, you know. So like everybody'd be like, We're not if gonna you, have fun. yeah. So like once you get out of like boot camp and stuff, <laughs> if you're seen wearing like a marine T-shirt while you're a marine, everybody's just like, oh, like look at this dude, what, <laughs> uh, what a loser, yeah, yeah. lame, yeah. And, but everyone's um, everyone has tattoos. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tattoos. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't have any tattoos when I was in, and then um, <coughs> that. The one thing, the one of the things that shunned upon was like taking pictures of yeah. like yourself while you were there. So mm. I was always <coughs> getting made fun of uh, for like I'd always be like I'd be like oh shit yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah yeah like taking pictures or taking pictures of, like my friends or like like I take picture of me on this cliff that I shouldn't be standing on and like <laughs> it's stuff like that mm. and uh, so I was doing it then, <coughs> but I always tell people like my biggest regret is like I was on country like number like 19 or 20 before I actually bought my like first DSLR. Ooh. I would always, I would just do it with all my phones. Yeah. And um, yeah, so then I, I got started into it like for real, like a lot. And that was great English, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in 2016, I think, 2015. Yeah, so um, then since then, I was mostly like, since I was traveling a lot, I was mostly just like travel, I'd take picture like mountains or something like that. But then I really like portraiture, so that's like what nice. I really wanted to do. But uh, I think everybody's a little apprehensive when it do when it comes to portraiture, like starting out, because yeah. you can't just be like, "Hey, can I take your picture?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, Especially as a guy, I think yeah. I, I think it's a lot easier yeah. to be like a female photographer, like if you're asking like other females to to model for you. Yeah. But like if you're a guy asking another guy too, the other guy's like, "Like, no, bro, that's weird." Yeah. Like, like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want my oh, portrait? <laughs> I think it's a little bit different here in the Midwest. Yeah, like yeah, if you're yeah, on yeah. the West Coast, I think it's <coughs> probably just more It's accepted. common. It's yeah. common, yeah. That's here, true. yeah, yeah. Photography <coughs> and, like, videography isn't as 
prevalent obviously is like somewhere as like LA mm-hmm. or like New York. So yeah, here if somebody's just like, oh dude, can I take your picture? Like you just be like, oh uh, mm, yeah, wait, yeah uh, I don't know, yeah. So um, yeah, and then I came back here, <coughs> and I. Can you hear that? Sorry. What? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I came back here, and then I uh, really started like trying to build it more, and like took it more seriously. So yeah. Yeah. Good. It was just us. Yeah. Just alone and unafraid. It's just me and Manny now. Yeah. Well, okay. So were you always into photography then, yeah. or like growing up? Did you like take photography <coughs> courses? Because I I started off in photography. Like oh really? Yeah. Uh, film. I did film photography in high school. I've always been into it. Um, I don't do like I still do film photography. Mm-hmm. Um, now I don't have a digital camera. Like I sold mine a while ago, and I wanted to get something that was more video based. So that's also why we geeked out with you that you were mm-hmm. shooting on a Sony because like that's we shoot on Sony's too. I just uh, switched too. You just so switched. Were yeah. you doing Canon beforehand? I was, beforehand? Canon, yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. was Canon girl for the longest time. <coughs> I, I'm not. I'm indifferent about both, but I mean like I like <coughs> I like my Sony now. Well, Sony's like cutting edge <coughs> right now. That's yeah. what everybody is really yep. getting into because of the mirrorless. Yeah, exactly. You know their lenses are or their um, and their branding's great. And, like, <laughs> and their yeah. s- their products are good. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. I was really surprised. So can, can we go back just a little bit? Like, there's some space in between. <laughs> you um, got here all quick. Between like when, so you got into the services. Like, yep. you became trained at your job. You had those experiences, and then so like, what like what was that experience like? Because I mean, I I've never been in the military. I don't have any people in my mm-hmm. family that served in the military. I have a cousin actually in the Navy, uh, <coughs> but I don't think he's been like lived in any other country. Um, so like, how does that? happen like you <laughs> live in so many different countries i mean like i like i guess my limited experience is like i think i would think that like okay you get deployed you go and serve in a country or two mm-hmm. and then like you Come spend back. a year there or two years there and then you're back and then you maybe you go back to that same country or to another country but like i've never met somebody like you that has lived in so many different countries being in the military so like what like how did that happen and what was that um, so basically, um, like I said, I joined the infantry specifically because I wanted to go fight. That was mm-hmm. like that was the main reason. Like I always, I always say like you don't join the Marine Corps, especially the infantry, unless you want to fight. Like mm-hmm. that's right. that's the main reason. And um, so I'd been in for like two years already <coughs> in the infantry, and we'd done. We got like word like, hey, you guys are gonna deploy to Afghanistan, and they would send us to do workups and do training like that, and then they'd be like, okay, no, it's not happening. And then they would, because the war is kind of winding down at yeah. that point, at least for the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like waiting, waiting, and then, <coughs> so we have this thing called the Marine Security Guard Program in the Marine in the Marine Corps, which we're the only branch that protects embassies. Oh. So um, almost okay. every embassy, it's like 195 embassies and consulates around the world have Marines at them, like active duty Marines protecting Whoa, them. Uh-huh. Um, so. Yeah, so they have this program, <coughs> and at the time, um, usually they reserve it for higher ranks, but they have this thing called the HIST. I don't know what the acronym stands for, but basically they go through everybody's records, like electronically, and then they put in what they're looking for, and then it like, shoots them all back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And usually they reserve it for like sergeants, and I was a Lance Corporal, which is like an E3. It's pretty low rank. And at that time, they <coughs> it was pre- post-Benghazi, so when I was going through mm. infantry school, Benghazi had just happened. Mm-hmm. Mm. So at that point, right when that happened, the the, er, um, the president was like, hey, I want more embassy guards like everywhere. So then the mm. Marine Corps is like scrambling to find a <laughs> thousand more people to fill like, wow. to plus up spots, every, yeah. all, the, all, the, all the spots out there. So they, a message came out <coughs> and they were taking like lower ranking Marines, uh, specifically from the infantry at that time, which is a horrible idea because <laughs> <laughs> for lack of a better term, we were a bunch of shit bags. Like oh they, God. like that's over there. Yeah, we were, it just we were not like the model Marines. Like we're right. not the ones you see on the posters, like <laughs> the sword and like all that stuff. We were just like we we're good at like shooting guns and cussing and drinking and stuff. And that was that was really it. We weren't it. So they were like, oh, we need want a bunch of infantry Marines because we're also the biggest um, demographic in the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. We twenty percent, I think, is just not all infantry. Oh wow. And, um, <coughs> so yeah, I got hissed. I got voluntold to go get interviewed. It was still volunteer, but yeah. like I had to go voluntold. get screened. Yeah, <laughs> I, like I got voluntold. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's common. So I got voluntold to go get screened. So like, you have to go get screened. You can say no, but you have to go get screened. I was like, okay. So they had this dude, and there's a one thing that uh, they call grunts. Like infantry dudes like is like when you see people's ribbons, uh-huh. and like they have a bunch, but especially if they have like V's, which is for valor, which is doing something like mm. crazy. Yeah. Um, I remember the dude giving us like the brief. 
was this like older, super high ranking, like Master Sergeant, had a huge ribbon rack, had a bunch of combat Vs on his on his chest, and we're all just like, oh yo, like oh this dude God. knows what he's talking about. Automatically, like we're just like, oh my goodness, it's the second coming. And then uh, so he gives us, he's like, yeah, I was the detachment commander in like Rome and like or like France or something. We're like, dude, that's crazy. And he's like, you guys can go live overseas and you get three different countries for a year apiece, and you're gonna be doing that. And then. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do it. And so I had one of my um, more senior guys. He had done it, too, like, way back. Yeah. And he was like, yo, dude. He's like, to be honest, we're not going anywhere. Like, they're not, the war's dying. We're not going to go. So he's like, best advice, uh, he's like, just do it. Because if anything, you're going to get stuck on a boat floating around the Mediterranean or, like, the mm. the Pacific, just yeah. lollygagging around. And you're just, he's like, do it. He's like, you'll make more money. You'll get to do a bunch of cool stuff. So then... I did it, got selected, went to school in Quantico, Virginia, right next to like, the FBI Academy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's a show called Quantico, <laughs> yeah, right? It's yep. not that place, right? Not accurate, but yeah, yeah. It's not, <laughs> I like, can't imagine no, it no, it's be, yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen it personally. I just heard it. I know that it's Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a good show. Um, went to school there for two months, <clears throat> and then I ranked pretty high in my class. I think I was in like, the top 10 or top 20, but <clears throat> so then a lot of they, – they try to send them to good places. So nice. the thing was is that everybody that was my peer group, like in that top percentile, were all like sergeants or corporals, and I was like the lowest ranking Ooh. one. And so a lot of people didn't want me. So the first thing I heard is that uh, I was kind of, I've always been the kind of like a class clown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I sat next to this dude named, his name is Moore, because it's al alphabetical. And uh, <laughs> we were the two like jokesters, I guess, of the group. <laughs> so uh, Couldn't they were separate just, you either because your last name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they like pulled out this list and they're like reading where everybody's going. They're like, more Morales, you're going to Booty Fest. And we're like, what the hell is Booty Fest? <laughs> like, is that the capital of Djibouti or something? And they're like, <laughs> and the, the instructor's like, no, you idiots. Like, that's Budapest, Hungary. And we're just like, <laughs> we're like, I, cool. Like, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. And then, awesome. uh, so then like a day later, they come in <clears throat> and they're like, um, Morales, you're not going to Budapest anymore. You're going to, I think it was Afghanistan. And I was like, all right, cool. I'll save money. Come in the next day. And they're like, uh, you're not going to Afghanistan anymore. You're going to Rome. I was like, tight. Yeah. And then I was like, all right. Take it. Yeah. And so <coughs> then they come in a little bit later, like a couple days later, and they're like, hey, you're going to Lome, Togo. And I'm like, what is that? And they're like, it's a tiny Africa. little country in Africa, in Western Africa. <coughs> and I got pretty lucky because the detachment commander in that post in Ghana, the neighboring country, mm -hmm. <coughs> saw he was getting like a higher ranking Marine and who's a staff sergeant, which means he automatically had to be like in charge of something. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want that. So like, he was like, who's the other guy going to Togo? And then he saw like the low, low ranking. Yeah. Marine, <laughs> and I was like, they're like, all right, dude, let's do a swap. We'll give you, give me your guy and I'll give you mine. And I lucked out a lot because Ghana was amazing. Like oh, I, I, I lived in Accra, Ghana for a year cool. in West Africa. Wow. And uh, that detachment commander, like my boss ended up being, I call him my dad because he's like a father figure to me. Like he, he was so, probably the best leader I've ever had. Dope. Yeah. It's amazing how those yeah. types of yeah, things right? work out like yeah, yeah, that, just seemingly randomly, mm -hmm. right? Because I was like, oh, dang it. Like, I'm going to West Africa, and I'm supposed to be going to Europe, like, yeah. that kind of thing. And <clears throat> I tell people, too, like, it was a blessing in disguise because, like, I was really bummed because I had friends going to, like, Paris and <coughs> Rome, Naples, uh, you name it, like, all those yeah. cool countries everywhere, yeah. the Bahamas, like, stuff like oh. that. And... They're like, oh, I'm going to West Africa, and I was like so bummed about it. But it ended up being like probably my one of my favorite places I've ever been. I heard Ghana is one of the most beautiful places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 beautiful. <laughs> they uh, they all speak English there, which was like the really cool thing because oh, yeah. all the neighboring ones speak French, and like I don't know how to speak French. <laughs> so yeah, so, so they all spoke English. So that's kind of the beginning of your journey. Yeah. Like how many yeah. countries have you lived in since then? Lived in, um, or worked in, I guess I should say. <laughs> um. Mm, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so you need I started. Our fingers. In, I started in Ghana. Kind of a checklist. I'll there. just kind of give you the, the story. It kind of helps a little bit more. Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> after my year in Ghana, I got. I was supposed to go to Croatia, because my boss went there and he like pulled me there. He was like, "All right, I'll bring you with me to Croatia." I'm like, "Yeah, tight." But then they had this new unit after Benghazi got started called uh, MSO, it's a Marine Security Guard Augmentation Unit, which is basically like a quick reaction force for us, but we fall under the State Department. That's another thing about Marine Security Guard duty is okay. you're working for the State Department, not the Marine Corps. Oh, they kind of loan you to them for I a time. See, okay. <clears throat> so we were, we were diplomats, technically. And um, so they sent me there because I was an infantry guy. 
So he sent me there, and I was like, damn, dude, dude. And I didn't like it. It was in Quantico again. So I did, instead of getting to live in Croatia like I was supposed to, I had to stay in America, which is not what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't happy about it. But <coughs> I ended up getting deployed to Istanbul, Turkey. And I was there for like two months. <coughs> and I used to do um, VIP support for um, POTUS v. POTUS in the sex state. So I went to uh, Amman, Jordan, <coughs> um, Sydney, Australia, Hanoi, Vietnam, Riga, Latvia, and I think there's another place that I can't remember. Uh, so I got, I got sent there and to work. So basically we would go there to help the setup when they get there. So like I got to meet Obama and Biden and um, oh, wow, Kerry cool. and um, who else? Like uh, the sec def and all that stuff. Yeah. And so you, would go, you would kind of be the part of the scout team that would go and like scout out the whole we security We were doing situation. security for like the support personnel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, so after that, my next orders were to go to – um, they told me I was going to Bujumbura, Burundi, which is like one of the most dangerous countries in the world. Really? And I was like, man, can I get a good one? Yeah. <laughs> and then, so I wasn't going to go ask to be like, hey, like, can I go somewhere else? But finally, like our, our senior enlisted guy would like one day caught me in the hall. And he's like, hey, uh, you're going to Burundi. And I was like, yes, Master Sergeant. He's like, he's like, do you like your post choice? I'm like, um, you want me to on you want me to be honest? Or you want me to lie? And he was <laughs> like, he's like, well, I already changed it. And I was like, he's like, you're going to Abu Dhabi. So which is. Like 30 minutes from Dubai, yeah. or, like, or probably an hour of traffic. But uh, <clears throat> so I ended up going there, and I was lucky because when I got there, I was asked to extend. So I uh, uh, did a fourth post there, which we were only supposed to do three. So I ended up being two years in Abu Dhabi, and that yeah. was kind of like the the countries that I lived in or that I worked in. Okay, yeah. what well, um, what's like some of the funnest, craziest things you've done overseas in, in what country? And why, like, <laughs> why was it crazy because it was in that country or is it just crazy because you did it or what? Um, like, did you drive across a country <coughs> without a driver's license and a different type of car that you've never driven before? Yeah, like that? <laughs> I guess, yeah. I went through, I went to Ireland, all right-sided, wait, yeah, right-sided cars on the left side of the road. Yeah, and freaks me out. Yeah, and, like, their roads are, like, this big. Like, that's what I love about America. Yeah. Like, little things like that. Like, our roads are, like, big. Like, they're tiny-ass little roads. So I almost died, like, a million times driving. Oh, my goodness. And then, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say, like, we, we sunk a canoe in the ocean in Vietnam because um, they were not made for American-sized people. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> so we were taking it water the whole time. Yeah. And we sunk a canoe, and it would look like out of a movie. Like, the tip was sticking out. <laughs> and we had to hitch a ride on the back of, like, a bamboo raft. Wow. And yeah, I mean, there's Adventures. there's a lot of yeah, like a lot of different things. But uh, well, yeah. we're going to I want to get more into that and yeah. into your travels in our next segment. So um, thanks for sticking with us. We'll be right back. Still tuned into the real news. I'm Pat. I'm Ruby. And we're still here with Manny. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, man, you're one of the most interesting people you. I've ever I'm met. I'm really so. not though. Like <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done a lot of really interesting things, I guess. Yeah. Uh, if you if you want to put it that way. Um, so let's keep going, man. So like you're uh, working security uh, for different embassies all over the world, and that's how mm -hmm. that's what you were doing in the Marines. Cool. Um, and so what, it, what was the process of leaving that and then doing it privately? Is there some particular reason or uh, philosophy or anything like that that drove that decision? Uh, yeah, so um, basically just to – my main goal <coughs> has been to go to college, like, like actual brick-and-mortar school. Nice. So the real reason I'm, like, doing it is to save money because I don't want to have to work during school because I've been – like, I've, I've done, like, online – I'm technically a student now, but, like – it's different, you know? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I know that like, I've never been a fan of school, but it's, I, it's no, I know it's something I need to do. Mm -hmm. That's, that was English. I was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, I know it's something I need to do because my, my end goal is I want to do like federal law enforcement. Yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> so I know you have to have a degree to do it. So I know I need to do it. And I, I want to go to school because I know if I do it online, I don't think I'm going to do as good as if like, because mm-hmm. I'm like a visual person. Yeah. yeah I'm that um, way too. Yeah. So I need to be like in the classroom. But I don't want to have to work during during school. So, and if I do, I want to be a bartender. For some reason, that's like my, my <laughs> aspiration. I really it's just definitely be a fun. It's definitely have fun. Have you done it? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Not like I didn't do it in college. Some but house parties. I did it back at my. Uh, <laughs> I did it for a br- brief amount of time in my hometown uh, when I was back there for a summer one time. Yeah, it's it's pretty fun. <laughs> I can I would have I, I would have liked doing it in school. I, it wouldn't have been good for me because I partied too much anyway. So like it would have just been a part of that lifestyle for me, and that would not have been good academically. It would have been be behind the, the bar. Yeah, yeah, behind the bar, bar. You're just like, yo, dude, I'm gonna get another bar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so. Yeah. So that was that was uh, that's the motivator, I guess. Like I like I said, I just got out. Like what is it? Like now six months ago. Um, yeah, and I came back here, and um, I was supposed to leave, like, immediately. Like, and that was the thing, too. When I was getting out of, like, high school, mm-hmm. I wanted to get out so bad. I'm like, dude, like, I just, like, it's just, like, it's so small. I want to yeah. see things. I want to. So you I did. came back, and it was the same thing. Like, I was like, dude, I can't stay here. Because to me, uh, this place always kind of, like, I'd come home on leave to, like, see yeah. my family and stuff. And it always kind of felt like a black hole. Because, like, I think. Mm. Um, a lot of problems like these days, especially like with like mental health and stuff with like veterans was um, I explained Jay and I are actually talking about this yesterday. Yeah. Um, shout out to you, Jay. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, was I felt like in the military, I was in a bubble. Right. Yeah. So like time kind of stopped for me and like my life was doing its own thing. Mm-hmm. But like everything back here kept progressing yeah. at like a fast pace, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'd come home and I hit my friends up and like the first couple of times everybody was still kind of doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, doing the same thing. They're just like, yeah, like, oh, yeah, like, let's hang out. Like, oh, cool. Then, like, a year would go by and i come back. And then they'd be like, oh, I can't. Like, I have, I have a kid now. Or yeah. I have, I'm oh, married wow. or I'd, I'm in school. And, like, now, <clears throat> and for me, I was, like, still, like, I'm still, I still feel like I'm 18. Like, I just left and, like, life kept going and I stayed the same. What a wild so, experience. Yeah, so then it was kind of, like, it's kind of like a, that's, a, I think, a hard part people have a problem adjusting to is like your life kind of stays the same yeah. and you're living in like your own little world but every the world keeps changing mm-hmm. like you know like back your back home life and I think a lot of people struggle with that so when I uh <coughs> when I got home like that was like the real awakening where I was like whoa like I'm, I'm on my own now like I have to you know like everybody's yeah. <coughs> got their own lives they've got their things like for some reason all my friends are engineers <laughs> like, <Yeah. they're> like <laughs> so they have like real real oh, jobs okay. like they're like like I'm just like like you can't just like hit him up like on a weekday and be like yo let's go do this like and, like, and, like yeah dude I gotta get up in like six and make like, a go. bridge yeah yeah happen. yeah yeah I gotta <laughs> go make sure something flies they're like yeah <coughs> yeah so um it was a it was an, a weird transition like and it still is I mean but yeah, it, it yeah. it's better it, it's like definitely finding the network um, like here and uh, I'm actually kind of glad I got to stay longer because I was. Like I said, I was trying to leave like immediately as soon as I got back. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave Kansas City again, and I guess it, it kind of meant to happen where I, I stayed here longer than expected, and then I got to see like how cool the city actually is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I thought you know I thought it was just corn and like P and L, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, so yeah, and then I met a bunch of cool people like all the like all everybody from Creators Group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then a bunch of other photographers and models and videographers and all kinds of people, and um. So yeah, it was yeah like a, it's like a blessing in disguise again. So so now you're hooked, but you have like you have work planned, right? Like you're planning on leaving. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I leave in I leave in like a week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where I'm to? Or is this classified information? Uh, I don't know. So it's in Southern Africa. Okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll be there for up to a year. Um, and so <laughs> now you're Whoa. a con a, a pri- private contractor. Mm-hmm. Uh. Like, how does that work? Like, are you, like, you go and get hired by a firm or, like, you literally are, like, your own thing and <coughs> just so hire you? <coughs> so the the government uses um, companies, right? So mm-hmm. then those companies go target, like, veterans because we have, like, the security clearances you need, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So another good thing that happened from embassy duty is I got a high clearance that's uh to get as a civilian is like really hard and it's expensive for that company Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's rumored to be like hundreds like over a hundred thousand dollars to get this background check and uh 
uh, they're looking at I don't know if that's trash true. for that background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they, they interviewed <laughs> my in friends from high school. Yeah. Like they, yeah, they had a person come to, like, it's funny. This is a funny story. Um, so I put them, I put, like, the same three friends I'd grown up with since, like, little kids. I put yeah. them on there. It turns out they were all roommates in college. Like, they all went to Mizzou. Oh, gosh. Uh, I know, like, you guys are, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, So I remember I got a phone call or, like, a FaceTime from them. And they were, like, <coughs> they're like yo, dude, like, uh, so we had this lady this agent come to our house and like interview us about you i was like oh really yeah and he's like yeah it was funny though because like my friend was Ian, or uh <laughs> my friend it was mitchell my friend mitchell and he was like yeah so like at the end they were like yo do you know what we can find like an ian and then he was just like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ian. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> like comes downstairs <laughs> and like so yeah it's like it's a super in-depth <clears throat> like really um thorough background check but they hire they look for those people because they don't have to get new ones you know mm-hmm. they all they have to do is just kind of um, take it and then they can hire those dudes that are already qualified and all that stuff. Yeah, so all that work is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. There's no point in training somebody new and you can just get somebody who already knows the job straight out of like the military <coughs> or something like that that has the qualifications. So, is it the case since you're a private contractor now, now do you have more say in what you do or is it still kind of like you're at the mercy of the firm that hired you and you're like, okay, you're to going place here? You somewhere. <coughs> it's, a, it's a hierarchy like anything, like a seniority thing. So, I didn't get to pick my first country. I was gonna go to and I they have a bunch of like really cool places nice. but they were like it's in like the the offer letter they send like you don't get to pick your first one dude like uh, <laughs> <and then> I, <laughs> so uh, <coughs> so I didn't get to pick this one I mean it should be fun I'm I didn't really care where they sent me because <coughs> I, I like seeing new places mm-hmm. like, obviously there's some places I would have preferred to have gone but like where's your top choice like if you could go <coughs> anywhere like place me here for this long where would you go see like in the military they never send me to Europe they sent me to Europe once, which was Latvia, which is like kind of like mm-hmm. up there. Yeah, um, it's like Eastern Europe. Right? Yeah, here's yeah. the green. Sea, it's like up there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and um, that was yeah, it was different. Um, <coughs> and I wanted to go to like Germany or like my my main one I wanted to go was to Madrid. I've been to Madrid, Ooh. but like I wanted to get live there. Mm-hmm. And I asked for that one every time they give you a wish list, they don't listen to it, and they were like. Every time, it's first one was like Madrid. Yeah, just like Madrid, Madrid, Madrid. And I wanted to get sent there. And I never actually had to do any like assignments there. Yeah. And so yeah, there was just like you know, just somewhere in Europe. I just want to s- see the other side, you know, like somewhere that's not. Have you ever been placed been placed in South America? Uh. Or have you ever traveled down there? Yeah, I uh, went and visited when I was in Ghana. My two best friends uh, at the embassy were a married couple, mm-hmm. and we'd always hang out with them. And they, it's cool because usually when you make a friend that works at the embassy, they always get posted different places. Oh, so you can go visit. So them. they were in Rio. Um, for t- three years, and so I went and visited them in Rio, nice. uh, right before Carnival. So, um, yeah, I went and saw them. It was amazing. Um, it's like Rio's like the most lit but dangerous place I've ever been. Like, like it they like just my type of place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like Tip the night's a little danger. bit better when oh you know goodness. you might get stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you gotta like keep yeah. one oh, eye open correct. and watch your back. Yeah, well. yeah. Like I've uh. seen a dude get mugged in a crowd of ten thousand people with like a butcher knife. Like shut up, seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like everybody just kind of like, and like in their heads they're like, oh, it's real, you know. Yeah. And like then that. the dude just kind of gave him a wallet and left. Or yeah, like they just just what? dudes just robbing everybody. They're like they tell you no, don't take phones, no expensive watches, nothing like. And if anything, have like a backup crappy phone that you can give somebody in case they take yeah. it. And like they were like putting money in the bottom of their shoes or like or like or like a hidden Dang. pocket. Yeah, because they're just like as long as you have enough to get home with the cab. Yeah. Like because yeah, but it was so much fun. Like wow. so much fun. It's like the Wild West in in Rio. What? Yeah. I want to go there. <coughs> yeah, you yeah, should. It's a good time. What's some other like exciting, adventurous, crazy stuff <coughs> that you've seen or? Crazy stuff that you've seen. I'm really asking about like what other crazy things have you seen, but like um, what other things have you done that too? you can talk about? <laughs> you can talk about. Uh, I don't know if this is getting me in trouble or anything. I'm not in anymore. So yeah. Uh, when I was in Vietnam, <coughs> I was there for President Obama's visit, mm-hmm. and uh, so we're dry the whole time. You can't drink. You yeah. can't like do anything while you're there like that. So then at the end, there there's always a few days at the end where you can like kind of let loose. Yeah. So. Uh, they have a thing called an RSO and an embassy, which is the regional security officer. Or uh, yeah, and he's the highest ranking U.S. federal law enforcement in that country. Mm-hmm. So he's like the end all be all when it comes to like what happened. Yeah, yeah, kind of. So he's yeah, so he's in charge of like security and stuff. Plus, 
if there's Americans doing stupid crap in other countries, they're the dude to go and arrest them. Mm. Oh. And so kind of like The Rock in Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Just obviously it's not real. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, racing street game. Yeah, 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 yeah. International yeah, yeah. crime. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so this dude, <laughs> he's a cool guy. But uh, I remember <coughs> it was one of our wheels up parties and we were like r- really, really smashed walking around Hanoi. Like wow. through alleys, ha- bar hopping, doing all this stuff, and we were like in no condition to be talking to anybody important. Oh, Come out of this alley, and we bump into like the dude, and we're like, "Oh, we're like, hey, sir!" <laughs> and like oh, it was, it we're like, and it was like our boss, and then him, <clears throat> and a bunch of our Marines, and we're all just like, "Oh my God!" Like <laughs> we're we're gonna get kicked You're out, drunk. like, and then but the thing was like he was equally as drunk, and he was oh. with his, he was, <laughs> he was with his wife, but like I'm pretty sure like all of us were like the color of this table. We were just like, "Oh my <laughs> God!" Like this is where You're my like, Hello, my goodbye. it's been a good career. Like you know, like <laughs> thanks, uh, like thanks to the experiences, and then we like we're just like okay, and he was like, "Oh hey guys, like hey, this is my wife," and he's like slurring his words and like uh. yeah, and then um he's like, "Yo." Best noodles in the city down that alley, and we're like, oh, okay, like Thank you, sir. I gotta go by. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, yeah, exactly. We just like walked into the first bar we could find, like, we we're just like, All right, bye. And then, yeah, that was that was one that <clears throat> really had my heart race, and I never forgot. I was like, I'd never been so scared. I was like, Dude, this is it. Like, it's been a good ride, <laughs> you know? Sweet. Yeah. So, you wanna go, what do you like work for the FBI, CIA, Secret Service? Yeah, What's something like that. Move? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Whoever, whoever takes me, I guess. So yeah, well, it sounds like you have all the potential and all the experience that you probably need to do anything like that. So yeah, so uh, photography is kind of like a, like a side hustle, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not something I think I would do as a profession. Like it, I don't, it doesn't interest me that much. It does, but like there's other things I want to do, and like I feel like my purpose, I guess, is to help people. So I want to do it in like a higher capacity. So okay, I want to be like one of the one of the people that. You don't know they're making the difference, but they are, you know. Right. Um, I would say like I don't I don't feed off of like recognition. Mm-hmm. So like uh, I don't need somebody to tell me like, oh good job, like or like, oh, we're proud of you for this, or like I've never been that person. I don't need to like hear people say thank you. I yeah. just like I just kinda do it and then like if they don't know, they don't know and I don't care. Like it's mm-hmm. like it just I makes see. me feel good. So that yeah, I wanna do something like that. That um, it's like behind the scenes, but it's like important i guess okay yeah. cool well man thank you so much for coming out uh yeah, do you yeah, want to um me. let anybody know where yeah where they can, can we find, find you you, oh, you don't have okay. to share your social if you don't want no, no, to no that's good uh, uh uh, it's at YB Manny. It stands for your boy. Your boy. Yeah. <laughs> boy Manny. That was, yes. That's my a nickname I got. Um, yeah. Uh, that's that's my my Instagram. Um, and your travels and your photography and yeah. just like what you're doing in general. I probably should have made right? two separate pages, but I didn't. So that's I mean, okay. They're all that's just kind of in there. Yeah, yeah. It's not too late. You can so carry yeah. that as you go um, along, and uh, I hope you keep up with that passion of photography yeah, and things awesome. like that. Um, because who knows? I mean, like, you do have a pretty established career, and it sounds freaking yeah. crazy awesome. Um, but, we just scratched you know, the surface, honestly. Like, yeah. we didn't think <laughs> everything. Yeah. Don't assume that you will never do photography professionally yeah. either, you know, because maybe you could, or maybe you will. Um, when I go to college, that's probably something I'll do yeah. for that time. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're excited to hear what kind of what, uh, what happens to you in the future, and, mm-hmm. like, hopefully we get to talk to you again. Yeah, for sure. We'll get back. We'll catch maybe you in a yeah, time frame. Or yeah. in a dark alley. <laughs> yeah. <out there. laughs> just run into you <laughs> The crossroads. Yeah, right. Yeah. We're gonna be in like Japan or something and be like, oh, it's Manny. Just what? You are pop you? out of yeah. an alley like, yeah, hey. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. We're the Millennials. Uh, thanks again to Manny for joining thanks us. For and uh, check out all of our stuff. We're on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, and MySpace. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> We're not there. Uh, I'm Pat. <laughs> I'm Ruby. And we'll see you next time. Bye, fam. So this is a poem I wrote. It's called If Trump Ran a School. Um, A little bit of uh, background about it is um, I wrote this last year, and basically what I tried doing was taking uh, events from the news and things that Trump has done and said and try to apply them to think of what it would be like if instead of running a uh, uh, a a country, if he was running a school instead. And so... Most of these things are either, are are basically, they're taken from things that he said, just slightly reworked a little bit. And unfortunately, it's about a year old, this poem, 
So there's a lot of a lot of stuff that could be added since then. Anyway, here is if Trump ran a school. Good morning, teachers and students of Trump Elementary School. I have some bigly announcements to make this morning. There has been talk of students trying to transfer here from the school south of us. Trust me, folks, these are not good students. They're failing students. They're cheating students. And some of them are good students, I'm sure. But they will not be coming here. We're going to build a fence around our playground, and believe me, their principal is going to pay for it. We are going to bring back some of our best machines. We've ended the war on them, and we're bringing back clean typewriters, clean abacuses. Those are the future of Trump Elementary, and we are going to take care of our typewriters and abacuses. You better believe it. Sports, let's talk about sports. A lot of people are talking about it. We've got the best locker rooms. Sometimes I walk right in there while everyone's getting ready for the game. Everyone's getting dressed and everything else. It's a beautiful place. You know, there are no men anywhere, but when you're the principal, I'm inspecting it. Is everything okay? And it's not just the beauties in the locker room. Our teachers are beautiful. Sometimes I just walk up to them and kiss them. I don't even ask. And when you're the principal, they let you do it. Oh, and on the field, we have the most fans ever. It is without question the most fans that have ever come to a football game. But the anthem, it's terrible. It's a disaster. They're disrespecting our flag. We've even had some kindergartners kneeling during the Pledge of Allegiance. Those teachers need to throw those sons of bitches right out of the school. That'll teach them a lesson. Oh, we've got the best teachers. We've got the best teachers anywhere in the world, folks. You know, I always hire American, and we've got the best anywhere. We've got Mr. Pruitt teaching science. He's doing amazing things. He just dumped a bunch of oil in our beautiful, beautiful fish tank. The kids are learning so much. We've got Mr. Carson teaching intro to architecture. He's never built a house before, but he's lived in one before. Believe me, folks. Plus, he's got gifted hands, very gifted hands. We've got the wonderful Mr. Perry. He was going to do something amazing, but now he's decided to get rid of the job altogether. A lot of people are saying that, I hear. And there are some classes that won't be happening because we just didn't get a teacher for them. Just some empty positions we've leaving open. And of course, we've got the wonderful Ms. DeVos. She plans our whole curriculum. She's taking care of church prayers every morning, helping our proficiency grow, our growth proficiency, or whatever. And we're getting rid of some of our worst teachers. Little Mr. Corker was a disaster. We're getting rid out of here. Mr. Flake is terrible. He left, and he has no chance of becoming a teacher anywhere else. We had a couple of others last year try to become principal, but no, no, sorry, folks. No dice for low energy Jeb. He can't run the school. He'd be exhausted before lunch. A lion Ted, he'd be a total disaster. You can't trust a word he says. And Crooked Hillary, she didn't even use her school email address. Attention, students, I've got wonderful news, the best news many people are saying that you've ever heard. We have a new school nursing plan in place. It's going to take care of everybody. The old plan was an absolute disaster. All students will be able to get a Band-Aid if they need it. Under my new plan, everyone can get a Band-Aid. Everyone can get Advil. It's going to be amazing. You'll need to pay for it yourself, but it's going to be great. And if you were sick before you got here, we can't help you. No way, folks. We're not going to pay for it. And it's going to save our school a lot of money. Believe me, folks, if you get hurt, our school is the place you want to be. And oh, boy, one kid got hurt real bad the other day. She fell off the monkey bars, had blood coming out of her wherever, so I call her mommy. No other principal's ever done that, and I tell her, look, I'm sorry she got hurt, but when she got on the monkey bars, she knew what she signed up for. The mom was very mean, said very nasty things, terrible woman, and a liar, and that wasn't even the worst one. We had grandparents day the other day, beautiful, beautiful event. They gave me a standing ovation, you know that? A lot of people are saying that. Everyone there is really rich. They're really rich people, you know. And this one grandpa, about 80 years old, very wealthy, a lot of people didn't like him. He fell off the stage. This guy falls off right on his face, hits his head, and I thought he died. And you know what I did? I said, oh, my God, that's disgusting, and I turned away. I couldn't, you know, he was right in front of me, and I turned away. I didn't want to touch him. He's bleeding all over the place. I felt terrible. You know, beautiful marble floor, didn't look like it. It changed color, became very red. 
and you have this poor guy, 80 years old, laying on the floor unconscious, and all the rich people are turning away. Oh, my God, this is terrible. This is disgusting. And, you know, they're turning away. Nobody wants to help the guy. His wife is screaming. She's sitting right next to him, and she's screaming. This guy almost ruined our beautiful, beautiful day. But, you know, it's not about the grandparents. It's about you, the students, you beautiful, beautiful people. You know, I was in the fifth grade classroom the other day, and I said to the teacher, you know, it's incredible. Wow. Just think, in a couple of years, I'll be dating you. You kids, you're so young, but I'm going to tell you a wonderful story. Did I ever tell you about my friend and his yacht? Should I tell you? Nah, I won't tell you, but you, you know life. You know life. And you know, folks, I got to tell you, when I took over this school, it was an absolute disaster, the worst. I took over a terrible mess, and I think I've done more in my time than any principal has ever done. A lot of people are saying that. And we've got this crazy principal at this school across town. I like to call him Little Rocket Man. And oh boy, none of the people before me ever took care of this guy. But we're going to, believe me, he's obviously a madman. He's starving and killing his students. And we are going to totally destroy his school. It should have been handled a long time ago, folks, but I'll handle it. I handle everything. Like there's been this long time fight going on at the school next door. There's two groups, and they both want to have the same school, and nobody's been able to figure it out but me. Believe me, I'm a lot smarter than all the other administrators, and I don't think it's going to be as difficult as people have thought it over. I'm like, you know, a smart person. I have the best plans. There's a lot of bad students out there, folks, a lot of bad students. The other day, some students came, and they vandalized our school. Some of our students tried to stop them. It was a very sad day, very sad. And I must say, there was ugliness that day and violence on many sides, on many sides. The people destroying our school were doing some bad stuff, and the people trying to stop them were pretty bad too. Many sides. Sad. Now the fake PTO is telling everyone that I didn't criticize the vandals, but nobody believes them. Their membership is failing. Nobody wants to join the PTO. They can't raise any funds. They've been lying about me so bad. It's the biggest witch hunt in PTO history. No principal has ever been treated this badly by the PTO before. It's really too bad the PTO is able to exist. Nobody believes them, and they should have their license taken away. Well, that about wraps things up for the daily announce. What? What's that? I'm hearing attention, teachers and students. I have just been told that there has been an overflow of toilets in the downstairs bathroom, and the bathroom is flooding. The janitors are asking for my help to clean it up, but this overflowing bathroom is their own mess, and they are going to need to clean it up. We can't be helping the janitors forever. They already owe the school a lot of money, and all their problems are their own making. The bathrooms are a disaster, and the janitors are going to need to clean it up. The head janitor was being very rude to me, very mean, very unfair. She's a very nasty woman. Anyway, students, have fun at school today. If you need me, I won't be in my office. I've been working very hard, so I'm taking a break to go golfing. Well, no, no, the lying PTO is telling you I'm golfing. I will, uh, I will be out of the office working very hard, but I've been left behind my daughter. She's one of the true beauties in this world. You know, I've often said I might be dating her if she wasn't my daughter. And my son-in-law, he's the best. He can handle everything in the school, and really in all schools everywhere while I'm gone. Okay, gotta go. I've got the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake you've ever seen waiting for me, and I'm going to wash it down with some delicious confete. <laughs> anyway, so that was if uh, Trump ran a school, and uh, pretty much everything was taken from news events, just adjusted to fit a school setting. And as I was reading it, I haven't actually looked over that poem in, in a while. Um, it could probably be expanded quite a bit now. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it.